Hey, what the fuck's up, man? This is Schmitty, brothers. It's fucking talking Schmidt, and we're back with another episode to stoke you out. And uh, hopped up on coffee. It's early rise for me today, bros. I am trying to like get into your mindset. So like my brain's foggy, but the coffee is strong. You know what I'm saying? Up next is a good friend of mine who's done the community a lot of service. He's uh, single handedly responsible for the uh, skate park out on Treasure Island that you all may have enjoyed at one point or another. This is Josh Matlock from normal illinois by the way anyway baseball season is over single tier hey it's Corey at blue plate 3218 mission street come see us meatloaf fried chicken deviled eggs dollar olympia beers we're here every day of the week we got a garden and we got smiles on our faces come let us make you happy interesting story um this week so i ordered some new glasses and I go with the Ray-Ban Wayfair glasses. It's a little nod to Jake, but also I always loved Ray-Bans and they fit pretty well. And I don't mind that style too much. I hate glasses, but if I'm going to wear them anyway, I they, they came in because it takes time to order them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they arrived, I went to pick them up and the guy showed them to me. I was like, oh, that's weird. They have blue. Uh, what are these called? Arms. And I looked at him. I was like, wait, are these them? And he's like, yeah, those are what you ordered in my head. I'm like, I didn't order blue. They should be all black. But it was kind of far away to drive. And I I don't know. My therapist says I need to be more assertive. Anyway, what I did was I went home. and, And then when I got home, I looked at him more closely and I was like, wait, it doesn't even say Ray-Ban anywhere on here. They look like Ray-Bans. They had some of the characteristics, but they weren't there. I mean, the logo wasn't there. So then I Googled whatever was on the side and came up like $14 thrift or uh, flea market style Ray-Bans kind of like that was the vibe. And I was like, whoa, and I told Cheryl and she's like, why did you go home? Why didn't you just deal with it there? And I was like, because my therapist said I need to be more assertive. <laughs> um, I like watching the sun come up, but I don't like waiting for the sun to come up. You know what I mean? Like I'm down to wake up, walk outside, get coffee and then see the sun come up. I'm not down for waking up and waiting an hour or two to go outside to get coffee to watch the sun come up. Now, all right. Good morning, everyone. This is Josh Matlock coming to you live, and you're talking Schmidt. It's cool. Like tonight is the night. Here we go again. Just give it the old cars turn. All big dogs in. 96 times, Schmitty. Thanks, Schmitty. We on? Schmitty? Talking Schmidt. That's called going to the hospital, bitch. I'd be <laughs> shit my pants. Love. Your Rolodex is fucking deep. It's right. about the one. The one. The one. Who is this guy? Thinks he's tough shit. What's up? We're tastemakers. Come on, Schmitty. What the fuck? Let's hear it for Greg Smith. Yeah! All right, kids. We got a huge day. We got two fucking trucks of cement on their way big pour i got 14 trials i got fucking 32 kids i got it's all coming right and so what i'm doing is i'm turning into like a rap artist for some reason and i wrote this little rap for an intro to my next guest so check this out ready it goes like this hold on i need a beat Yo, 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 I'm going to let my words flow. My podcast is champ. We go toe to toe. If you wake up mad, I'm going to leave your ass smiling. While Joshy lay cement out on Treasure Island, he oh. came from Illinois to the SFC. Now he's on Tech and Schmidt making history. Humor is important, but this ain't no joke. Like Albino said, let's provoke the stoke. While you're on the job looking at the clock, I'm a rapping with my guest. This is Josh Matlock. What up? Is that hungry approved or no way? Oh, man, you nailed it. Homie, <laughs> nailed it. Oh, man, I feel blessed. 
Dude, your studio is better than mine. What the fuck? Hey, man, I don't know. I'm just kind of rolling with it. Who let you get that Burnside sign, bro? That ain't cool. Did you talk to Sage? I got it right from LJ. <laughs> he had a whole uh, he had a whole storage unit full of them, like fucking like six of them down at the park, just kind of stacked on each other. Right. And he's like, Josh, come over here. I want you to have one of these. And it was cross street was like 14th or something. And uh, I don't know what happened to the other cross. I don't know what happened to it, but huh? Well, I <laughs> have, is that a chef Pierre board far, far your right. That's the chef Pierre board from the, from the pizza parlor at the opening there that I, night. I, I have that in my quiver and Frank Gerwer guest crooked. Yeah. I have that in my quiver, which I do not have. Is that a Steve Rocco? I just just came in. I fuck, dude. I'm such a junkie. I I had to. Uh, I bought this off eBay because all the shops got sold out. But yeah, it's the reish. Whoa, it's pretty sick. I had one in eighth grade, and I haven't had one since. So I mean, all these boxes are filled. Homie. Mm. Like, all deluxe. Shit, I love it, dude. Hoarding is hoarding is our life. How you doing? Well, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I uh, I slept good. Uh, and um, I'm just kind of getting my day going. I've got my cup of coffee. This coffee smells like shit. A little protein shake here going because I'm trying to get a bikini bod going for the for the springtime here. But uh, no, Dude. things are good, man. I've been busy, and you know I couldn't ask for uh, couldn't ask for much more. You know, just keeping my head up. Well, speaking of bikini bods, I don't know if you're familiar with my protocol, but what I did was. Last January, I stopped eating ice cream and went full diet exercise because August 16th, which is two months ago from the day today that we're recording, two month anniversary, y'all. <laughs> anyway, I fucking lost some weight because I needed to get my bikini bod into a tuxedo bod, right? And then August 17th, the day after my wedding, I woke up, French toast breakfast, 11 pints in 11 days of ice cream. And now the bikini bod is like pee bod. You know what I'm saying? But like yeah. now I got to shift gears and go back to bikini bod because January I'm going to Hawaii and I definitely need bikini bod again. So it's just kind of like that's how I do it. I just go up and then down and up. I can't do like the steady flow. You got to want it basically. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like a yo-yo, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I don't have any problem with, you know, you just been kind of sitting around a lot. Well, you work, you work. So you're fucking, I mean, you're doing heavy labor. So I think like that helps a lot too, right? It helps, but you know, like it comes with that as a big appetite. So, you know, my favorite food group is fried chicken. Oh, fried chicken. Ooh. And then my second favorite food group is milkshakes and ice cream. <laughs> like Fried that. food and ice cream will help you gain weight, kids, in case you're trying to, like, not be skinny anymore. Oh, my God, man. I was on, like, two breakfast sandwiches and, like, 12 donut holes just to get my day started. And that shit. <laughs> Dude. up to you so you know and i just just getting out there just skating shit i don't know <laughs> well let's start from the beginning i hear you're from an unusual city in illinois what's the name again it's normal illinois it's like <laughs> smack smack dab in the middle it's the heart of illinois uh-huh in cities i uh, shout out 309 my own shout out shockwave skate park uh, shockwave skate shop shout anyway, out like two twin cities bloomington normal I was born in normal and that's where I grew up like for my first 20 years of my life until I, uh, 20, How, you were there till you were 20. So I was 20, but I kind of, it took a minute. It's a, it's a funky story. Like, you know, with, definitely an adventure with Get such an unusual name for a city. I'm wondering how you found skateboarding. Oh, watching back to the future, 1985. And really? Then, yeah, that kind of got me hyped. And then Dustin Dolan said the same exact thing. No way. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it had the influence on a lot of people mm -hmm. that had one on me, but not to get, you know, I don't know. Like I saw that and uh, there used to be this group of punkers that would hang out downtown normal. And I, li I lived real close to downtown on one. This is a small town. And we would watch them. They would just like run up and jump over the railings and do these like bomb drops in their combat boots. And like, 
I don't know. I just thought that was the sickest thing. And then I got a skateboard for Christmas from my dad and it fucking, I was 1985, the year the bears won the super bowl. When you flipped the skateboard over and you looked at the bottom graphic, what was it? Uh, it was that pink Nash with the fucking dragon. No way. XR2 trucks, hot pink. I picked it out and I think it probably had maybe, it didn't have two tone wheels, but it had like, maybe like, they had pink wheels, but for I don't pink, know, big round, like capsule looking tail tail skid and you know nose bone and you know the skid plate yeah lapper and everything the bird what's that, the that bird, thing? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my it was the winter time and like back then in the winter we would go roller skating in the winter and the summer is when like the weather got well and like i could get out and try to skate around like the parking lot of of the apartment where i grew up and so does it normally snow in normal in the winter? I think that that's Schmidting. Oh, yeah. It used to get pretty bad. I mean, like 15 degrees, 12 below. Like, it, 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 yeah, it gets cold. Freezing rain. It'd stick to the trees and the branches would fall off and people's cars would get fucked up. And hmm. it was interesting. But um, damn, it was, a good, you know, it was a it was a small town, college town, but it was. Were you like parking garages and shit in the winter and uh, like trying to find it? Was there an indoor park or anywhere nearby? Not until I was like, I want to say 14. But back then, like this is trippy. Like we, my cut, my older cousin, Chris, he had a license. So I like he would start driving when he was like 16, which made me about 13, maybe. But he didn't let me go with him until I got a little older. But anyway, like. We go to Peoria, Illinois, and that was 30 miles from where I grew up, and they had an indoor called Airwaves, and we started going there around 90. I was like 15, and that's that was the closest indoor park. Before that, we'd go to Rotation Station in Rockford. Oh, wow. Did you ever hear about that? It had a big... I, I think so, yeah. Like, it had a big blue steel vert ramp, and uh -huh. we seen some demos there. like Rockford, Illinois? Yeah, it was west of Chicago, like a suburb kind of. Okay. And it was like this old roller skating rink. I and feel like we went to a town on Skate Rock that was western Chicago somewhere. I don't know if that was it, but there was an indoor park. This is obviously much later in life. but It ran for a while, and then um, I think it changed the name, and then people got to have keys, and you could pay rent, but fuck uh, my junior high school um home economics teacher used to do skaters unite and she would get a bus as well and like she would take a group of kids with a with an older skater chaperone and you know we'd do a waiver and she would take us up there too in the winter time mm -hmm. like a couple times a year and um but yeah it was always you would have to drive pretty you know if you want to skate it indoor who were your <clears throat> early influences? Like who was on your walls and shit, or who were you like hyped to see in the mags or whatever? Oh shit. Probably not as for sure. Um, the bones brigade. I remember used to write, you were know, you more not than guns? Oh fuck. Probably equal. You uh -huh. know, it was probably equal, but I, I, I had everybody, you know, I would get the magazine, I didn't have a subscription, but you could get it at the record store. And like my first mag, um, my cousin actually bought, it. I think it was, it was that pus head one where it was kind of trippy, swirly in the background. Uh, yeah. BK. It's a BK nose pick. Yes. That was, our, that was our first one. And then after that, anytime we could like make it, maybe they had it at the mall too. Anytime we could make it, we just tear every picture that like Jeff Phillips, not like uh, it was sick. The mofo <laughs> photo of Jeff Phillips, the cover, the fucking booster on the clown ramp, dude, is so that's one of my favorites. It's epic. And of course, it was like, and the kids, like, I got to see, like, my cousin and his older friends, like, those were kind of like, who, you know, like, can I just go, man? Let me go. And oh, I'll beat it, kook. Like, you know, they won't. Well, <laughs> what, what was the name of your record store? Do you remember? Mother Murphy's. Fuck. So sick. Ours was Rod's Records. <laughs> it's 
still in business for like 40 years. And then this gate shop was connected to it later on in like 90, 92, 93, they, they started shockwave. So it was mother Murphy's shockwaves and it was a head shop. It was a record shop. It was a skate shop, you know, and sick. Yeah. Before that, there was a bicycle shop and that's was the first place that had skate. Like they had all these completes on the wall, like maybe five completes, like ready to rides. And um, yeah, it was a trip, you know, you could go to the bike shop and get a board. I, I don't know. I think I heard one, you interviewed somebody else and it was the same thing. I think like, you, I mean, probably everywhere you could a bike shop or record shop was kind of, yeah, I think like we, I take it for granted because I grew up in, you know, Northern California. I've been here my whole life. So like, I think we were, we had a little different. I'm, I'm assuming the middle America doesn't have skate shops. Like we had go skate cause it was on, in Santa Cruz on the coast and then they yeah. expanded and different stuff. But yeah, I mean, however you could get a lot of bike stores, I think had skateboards too. Like it was kind of like the, the opening for skateboarding was through, whatever chain reaction or whatever the bike store was in your town as well as a record. So what, what was your first vinyl? Do you remember? Oh, I got a few I'm like eighth grade. I got a record player. It was the local naked hippie. It was like part of the first punk shows, like in our no town, way. Like pretty sick music scene, like this, this place called the gallery. Huh. It was called dancers before. And I could never go. I never could go to the shows, but, because I was too young, kind of, but it was the gallery and it was Naked Hippie, this band Simi Sids. Um, I mean, a lot of bands went to there. Naked Reagan played there. Nashville Pussy played there. Fucking Guitar Wolf played there. Like later on, like, geez, and like all, like, all my buddies started bands over there. And, um, but Naked Hippie, man, if you could hear it, they were like, it's still like, it rocks. It's so good. Sick. Did you ever go to Carbondale? We went, that's like the oldest. Uh, punk rock house in the u.s carbondale illinois oh um, no that's that's way south i think that's okay. way southern i think even it's, past it's like by herman's hole i think somewhere yeah. down there oh, yeah, by st louis or something kind of yeah i just remember like that's where gravette flew in and yeah it is by st louis because gravette flew into st louis but dude it's sick they got the the <laughs> basement and the history like yeah illinois is a good state huh it was all right. You know, by the time you're, you're able to like figure out that there's more out there, it was, you know, like time to go. Like when I was 20, it was my first taste of ever leaving. And I like rode my motorcycle with a buddy from fucking normal all the way to Portland, Oregon. It was 90. I wasn't even 21. So it was like the winter it was, bef- it was like nine, the winter in 93. So maybe I was like, barely like 20 but i rode all the way and i didn't meet anybody there but i went to burnside and that was the first time i ever saw any mountains or anything and oh no way <laughs> after it was a trip i had to get out of there like that's so crazy it was it was wild like and i got to burnside and uh i don't know stayed in this closet like i rented a closet my buddy loaned me a hundred bucks i stayed in this little closet and um eventually I was such a shithead. I didn't even make it the whole month. And uh, the people were like, you, you got to go, man. Like I, I had like, you know, it was eating the food, calling my grandma. Cause I like, checking in. And um, I think the last straw was, I brought these two girls back to like, to kick it. And we were tripping and we were like watching TV and laughing. And the next morning they're just like, you got to go. Hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, I called my grandma and she's like, we better sell that fucking motorcycle and get your ass on a Greyhound. So, sold the motorcycle for 80 bucks and my grandma got me a greyhound ticket back to illinois it was four days and four Damn. Days on the dirty dog <laughs> i managed to get have someone buy me a pint of southern comfort for the ride and i didn't i didn't drink it it's like i shared it with this old indian dude i think and that only lasted a day and then it was just like nyquil and stuff to sleep and get through it but it was mm. It was a grinder. Did you ever work in a skate shop? I did. I, I was one of the Shockwave's first employees when I was like, is 90, 92. Oh, sick. 92, I worked there. 
when they opened before that it was wild country which was like like an outdoor store you know for you know it had skis and a mountain gear and kind of like an rei for our town and then okay. they they opened a skate shop that was bef- and they were they were going for about four or five years and then shockwaves opened and bought all of wild country's inventory so um one of my one of my like older brothers like in a sense like he looked out for me this guy brian brian popejoy hmm. he was he got the job and then he like let's bring let's bring matt lock over and then this other kid john apps who worked there for like 20 years or something 10 years and um it was just it, that became like the play shockwaves you know rad is that kind of like when i started working at a skate shop that's how i got the bug of collecting boards is that kind of w- where it started for you did you kind of put some aside in those days or not till later not till later i had some but um like when i came here i kind of lost uh, everything stayed behind in chicago uh, because I, I came here and it was uh it was supposed to be a two-week vacation. You know, I drove out here with my roommate to do art installations uh, for the SF Expo, SF Art Expo. And we were going to, you know, we're going to make money. We're going to, you know, whore ourselves out. We're going to, and like, you know, hang art and stuff. So. Wait, was that the one where Becker built the wooden bowl inside? No. This, like Ed Templeton and all the, no. This was out in, um, out the marina, you know, where those like oh yeah like warehouse like fort mason stuff. or whatever yeah and so i mean long st- <laughs> anyway long story short so wild we drove out and we were gonna you know and we're supposed to drive back but the truck was like this old 70s ford truck and it completely just like once we got to the bay it it was done it broke down i'm not sure what happened but we stayed and the work ended like my homie uh jeff he uh he took a Greyhound back and he's like, you going to go? I'm like, I'm not going to take the Greyhound and maybe I'll be home next week and da da. But here we are. I ended up like getting a girlfriend and we were together for like five years from like the very first. It was kind of crazy. Like we so met, you just stayed. I just stayed and I didn't <laughs> go home for a whole year and my fucking roommates were pissed. Like uh, they took all my stuff because I would have rent money and like my records, any boards and anything I really had, they, they sold it. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, rightly so. <laughs> oh <laughs> man. Never really planned on staying. It just kind of happened that way. And like, you know, by the time Anna and I had like broken up, we had just shout out to uh, Anna. And Paco Collars. Shout out. <laughs> we had uh we had Le- Wizard and I had already been starting to dig on Border Town for like we we were like a weekend maybe or two weeks in. I mean it was mm. you know, we had got the barrel down there and we'd cut the top off and started burning trash at night. And this is on your trip on that same no, this was like four years later. Like I had been in California for four years already. Oh, okay. Kind of. How'd um, you meet Wizard? Oh, dude. Well, I, through Mickey. Mickey through, Riz? Mickey Riz. Yeah, I've known him since I got here. Um, so, okay. So like I was, um, I got a job over at Ashby Lumber, I think around 2001, 2002. And I worked there for quite a while and. Like, as soon as I started working there, I was, like, telling people, hey, if you need any wood, if you need anything, like, I'm kind of, like, I can get discounts. Like, that was, like, I wanted to, like, build ramps. Away. I wanted to start hooking people up. And so mm-hmm. the first Double Rock, you know, the one that was next to the, the cafe? Yeah, the one that, uh, well, who was it? Dave Duncan, I think, and yeah. built it. Yeah. Dave Duncan built it. Well, um like I knew Max and Max knew I worked there because he was like a shopper. Like I didn't know Max, but I knew him from seeing them at Ashby. Max Chef. And, yeah. And he he kind of like he kind of I think he got that going. But I was a delivery driver over there. So I'm like, yeah, like well, oh, you provided the wood for that I place. Provided all that wood for the first no. oh rock. I delivered it. I drove my truck inside the building and I remember the stacks of plywood had they wrote Duncan on the, and then he was yeah. like oh, name, you know, and 
Dude, I was there. I felt like I time lapsed the whole thing. I I'm probably saw you at some point. We've I think we definitely probably have crossed paths. Like, you know, we know a lot of the same people, you know, uh-huh. like New Becker. I, you know, we just I think we know a lot of the same folks, but yeah. Um, so I dropped, I mean, I dumped all that wood in there. And was Wizard helping out on that or ah, I think he laid out those pockets that was like the horseshoe bowl. Yeah, dude, that place was actually pretty fun. I kind of liked it almost better than Double Rock. Dude, how about the Roland? Remember I that? mean, that pyramid was like so big. It was like, unless you're Danny Fuenzalita, you're not going to fucking do much over it. Jake Nunn, some of those dudes. But like the other side where it was the big waterfall roll yeah. into the like step up and a hip into the like, that was my shit. I was like that I can get some on. Yeah, for sure. And just it was fun. The shit I've got to do and see, it's just been so rad. But so I, it was a Jim's ramp. Wiz was relaying it. Oh, yeah. Jim's ramp. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, do you Wiz? Like, so I went over there and that's where I met Wiz. I helped him relayer Jim's ramp. And then, then I'm not sure what was first, either that or Double Rock. It was all kind of, it, that was like 20 years ago. No, nah, Jim's ramp was first for sure. And like, dude. I was in California when they moved Jim's ramp from West Oakland to Adeline. Mm. I, <laughs> I never even went to the one in West Oakland. I only went to Adeline. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, we're, I was out on another trip. I drove out after the motorcycle to Oregon. I went back to Illinois. I drove out in this old seven, 1970s van with, to see my best friends, like uh, Ultimate Phil was here. He was living at Webster Street. You know, you know Phil. Yes, he, he's from your zone. Dude, we grew up together. No way. <laughs> That's That's my, one of my best friends. Yeah. That's uh, Burnett loves that dude. Yeah, those guys are real good buddies. Uh huh. And he was on Webster, and then my other best friend Matt Scott. Like it was us three grow, kind of growing up. Me, Matt, and Phil. And then I, Matt was in Sausalito, living on a boat with his dad. So I drove my van out to visit and Phil was at Webster. So we go over there and we would skate with like him and Jason Ferris and Scott Bourne and even um, Mm. Johnny Roughneck lived there at the time too, I think. And uh, but anyway, like not to get off beat, but anyway, it all kind of just intertwined, like how, what led to whatever is happening now, kind of like meeting people and, Well, that's what I was wondering is like, so in the beginning, are you kind of just working with wood and then that that progressed to cement or like, how did it kind of like evolve? I'm going to um, blame that one on, on dog boy. (laughs) Dog boy. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know dog boy and albino? Like, did you spend some time in Oregon? No, I met them all from like i met dog boy down at tire beach when we built the mini half oh you built that that thing i delivered all the concrete for that (laughs) that that didn't last long right (sighs) two one two days i think (laughs) like 36 hours (laughs) god that was so cool down by the ballpark kind of yeah yeah like once again like um so Wiz and I, we built the roll in and whatever. And like Mickey kind of always had me in mind for these, these projects and teamed me up with Wiz. Um, okay. And so they had already been digging, I think over there for like a week. And um, Wiz like, you know, Josh is over at Ashby Lumber. He'll get us the concrete. And so they ordered it up and I got, got the nice little discount and I delivered, delivered it all down there on a, on a big old flatbed, it was like four, oops, four or five pallets, and like there were so many hey, people. I can't remember everybody who was down there at the time, but uh-huh. loading all the concrete, and then like that was just it. I had to go there every day after work, and like Dog Boy was there, and that's they they had an electric mixer, and he showed me how to mix, and he told me like, watch how that concrete rolls off the fins. You want this can like he just was. I don't know from that, like him and I, like 
man, like he, he and I became super close over the years. And what a nice dude. Like you wouldn't believe how nice the guy is by his appearance. You look at him and you're like scared shitless. And then he jumps in the van you spend a week with him and you're, you guys are best friends like that. Dude, I met that dude in Seattle. We went to Orcas Island for a week and like forever, like dog boy. So right. And every, like every time, just biggest, like, God, what a fuck teddy bear. But, mm. you know, and then like after that, um, just, just got the bug. But like, I wasn't really like a big wood type park builder. I was just kind of like a helper. And I got to like work on that sim, the, the kidney, the sim park bowl that did end up coming to, San Francisco, it, it originated in Chicago. Mm. These guys, um, Steve Badger, Shout out. another guy, they they created the kidney in Chicago and it was in a museum there. And then it kind of went to, a couple years later, it went to Columbus, Ohio, to the Wexner. Is that the one that's in Supreme? It's the, it was the original. I don't think, I think the Supreme is a, is a replica of the one that was in the museum. Okay. Could be wrong. I, th- I thought the one that one went to like Idaho or something. That or uh-huh. that that kidney bowl. I got to um, go to Columbus and help reassemble it there and like kind of learn some wood tricks. But what are early on some of the fucking uh, you know being green to the whole situation? What are some of the like hard parts that you have to deal with as like the new guy and not knowing much and being at the bottom of the pole like? I know like from hanging out with all these guys all the time, I see like this is men's work and, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's got the old school mentality where it's like, no, you're getting fucked with and fucking like learn your shit and like be accountable for and all that stuff. Like, what are some of the things that like, you know, did you ever have to do any kind of initiative type of stuff? Oh my God. I still get fucked with it. Are you kidding me? If I'm on Bod's crew. He's just ruthless. He, he's, the Bod's not letting anybody off the hook. Every chance he gets, but, <laughs> well, <fuck it. laughs> but no, like, well, my first, like, you mean like, as far as getting my first skate park job, like what, what kind of, like I got, I, I guess more so like climbing the, the, the the totem pole if you will like i'm i'm assuming in the beginning you're just the bitch boy that goes gets water pour like does like the shit no one wants to do and then eventually you're telling people what to do and you're doing the cool shit like trialing or making sure that the things are right or you know whatever it is i think it's i think it's all i mean when i okay like when i first got on it would work for california skate parks mm-hmm. and um that dude aubrey brought me down to selma and so oh, yeah, it was Eric Dawkins. And then uh-huh. I mean, fuck, dude, he was such an asshole. Like he really like yelling me, Great horn! Fuck. Like it was like like a little uncalled for, but uh-huh. like I like I could I'll take abuse. Like, okay, yeah. But uh, you know, it's just like yeah, definitely just holding shit or shoveling shit for the, for that guy, and then um <laughs> And then, then my next guy I went and worked with was Matt Dyke. And like, that was a nightmare too, because we went <laughs> to Dry Ridge, Kentucky. It was a dry, Dry Ridge is a dry county. So there was like no drinking. And we oh, did damn. park. It was like three months. It should, should not have taken that long. And I mean, he was just like, God damn it. Oh, man, it was not fun, but um, uh-huh. you learned shit. And then like, and then like, you keep you can kind of come home and then uh this is like so gosh i don't even know what the question was but yeah you you do you do you never stop learning so well i guess what the question could be easier phrased as what's the gnarliest thing you can remember about the early days like what was like either you blew it big time and you were so bummed and that was how you learned not to blow it in that way or like somebody was like an extra dick to you in the beginning cuz you were like the greenest dude on the the thing or whatever. Probably getting really, really, really blacked out, drunk, and I f- destroyed the hotel room, <laughs> and, dude. And I almost got. This was in Canadian Texas, so it was maybe my second park with Dawkins, but um, maybe I thought I was showing off or something. But uh, Matt Dyke was my roommate, and I'd always heard like he was this crazy wild dude, and I thought. Like, thought it would be i don't know i just came in and ended up like trashing the hotel room breaking the mirror 
and like um the guy who was getting the park built was like the, this was a small town canadian texas like three four hundred people he owned like the steakhouse he owned the hotel he was building the park and donating it to the city he was like salem abraham was the guy and he was like who knows what kind of person he like he's some dark like some texas dude like but he uh he bailed me out of it he gave me four hundred dollars to um for the damages and like called it my get out of jail free card and like Dawkins wasn't very really pissed, but Aubrey wanted to beat my ass because I almost like they almost like got the you know, just stupid shit. I think that was it. And like, yeah. okay, I gotta like this isn't under the bridge style. This is like a real job. And if I want to learn anything and kind of be good at it, then you know, I mean it didn't I mean I still, you know, we still party, but it just like don't shit where you live, kind of like don't fuck up the rooms, you know. Yeah. When you first started doing it, uh like the first thing you did was where was that the one that you poured the half pipe out by the ballpark yeah that was tire beach and then so did you just instantly get like kind of a bug like a dick like dude I, this is this is what i want to do yeah i always had an a sense that i wanted to do it. like i'm not psychic or anything but you know sometimes you just kind of are drawn towards certain things and and that right there like i always wanted to to learn or just build skate stuff if you know like we built wood ramps but like concrete was just so much i don't know i was just drawn to that more so tire beach and then when that got um taken out it was like oh whoa and (laughs) the funny thing is is i live next door to um another good dude this dude brian mitchell he he lived in west oakland i had this warehouse space and he mm. was a medical student at the time. And I go back and I'm like, man, dude. and he's like, well, why don't you go do something? So he and I were at, walked down to where border town became. And we kind of scoped out an area where we thought it would be like the most unseen. And then like, he's like, well, let's just start digging. He's like, I want to get in shape. You know, like we just started pickaxing this little flat bottom. And I called wizard that day. That night, and he came over after working at Deluxe, and he's like, "Well, let me go get the templates from Tire Beach." And so the first night, we like cut up the the, the drum, we were digging a little bit, but then we started burning trash because oh my god, we had <laughs> these fucking drums, Schmitty, and they were these fifty-five gallon drums that we were getting um, vegetable oil in. Mm. Me, and, me and my neighbor Brian, we both had these diesel Mercedes. And we were running them off. He showed me how to run them off veggie oil. So he was getting the oil for free. He was trading wine for the oil. We were putting oil in our cars and not paying for for gas. And so one of these barrels were empty, but it still had this um, oil residue in it. We started burning trash and the flame was like, it was like (laughs) touching the freaking, the bottom of the bridge. And so that was kind of like what started like getting that place cleaned up with these veggie burn barrels that we were using for the de- It was just, it's wild, man. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. We're just going for it. What's the thought process though? Like I always trip on this and you know, you put in a lot of hours of work and it ain't easy. Like you're fucking, this is heavy labor. There's some prices that go into it, whether you're getting free or discount, you're still paying some money to get like the equipment and all that how are people so drawn to like renegade style of trying to build this big elaborate thing that could like the half pipe, like how heartbreaking was it that it was gone within a day when you were done? Fuck man. It, uh, I mean, do you look at it just like art? Like it's, it's like this thing that I need to complete and however long it lasts, that's, that's up. That's not up to me, but like, I want to finish it. It's like, it's trying to master the art of getting away with something. Maybe uh. <laughs> I can't explain it. Schmitty. Like it, for me, it's just, um, I really like to, to do stuff with my hands. I love building. And then the, the, the draw to it is like the illegal side of it. And being that um, maybe we're not supposed to do this, but at the same time, we're, why can't we, you know, like we're not doing anything wrong. We're just trying to make something better. 
and that's all I really am drawn to do is just make right. something better that's here that sucks, maybe, you know. It is part of the process like you go, let's just say border town for an example, just because it's we know that one. Is part of the process like, hey, we're gonna start and build this thing. We're gonna get it to a point where we can kind of like use it as our model. And then maybe we have a better chance of having it stay than just asking before it starts to say, hey, we want to do this. That's going to be no for sure. But yeah. if we build it and show like, look how rad this is, da, da, da. Or did that come later in life when you got older? Like, hey, maybe we can try to make these legit. I never uh, thought about anything going legit, you know, because it seems like every time something becomes legit, it loses its soul maybe in a way but mm. as far as border town um we just wanted to build a half pipe me and we started that with brian is just um we just wanted to recreate that half pipe i got a i got a picture right here you lived in that house with the ramp that was in the garage right that was like right down the street yeah did you ever go there yeah me becker and drahobo went there i got some photos it, and I had the weird oververt. It, it was like a extension up a wall or something, right? Yeah, you went there. Yeah, we met over there. I, yeah, I think that's when I first. At least that's when I met you. When I remember meeting you, you know, we probably met earlier than that, but that was when I was like, because I think Hustle Jamie lived in that area too, or something. Oh shit, maybe. But anyway, that was right. You guys had the key to the gate and opened it up, and yeah. it was like a block or two down was your house. Yeah. 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 Oh, you came to skate border town or the indoor. We came to help build, I think like work on shit, but then like the ramp was there. So we oh, skated. Oh shit. Yeah. Red. Yeah. A lot of people came through there. Like, Oh, like Anna and I got that, that warehouse. And this is probably a year and a half prior to even border town, even becoming anything. And so, she moved out and I ended up keeping it for another extra year and a half or so. And mm. so between that, like after that, you know, the word got out in border town and then like a bunch of people, but yeah, man, that was rad. Dude. That was, I met a lot of really rad and I can't even remember everybody like that just stopped by and helped. You know what I mean? Just stop by and like knocked on the door or like, yeah. I mean, we used to skate Berkeley since it opened like a lot. It was Drahobo would go there like four or five times a week. And, and yeah. I was filming him. And so we would always go there. We met Chubby, Lil D, all the kids major. And, and, and that's a solid crew. And then somehow I think that kind of was like, hey, there's this thing going on in Oakland. Oh, shit. And that's how we kind of figured that out. And then uh I think we met, I think wizard maybe was working at deluxe kind of at that time, maybe. Yeah. He was. Yeah. So like it probably Drahobo knew him, like picked up some boxes, new wizard or whatever. And then, uh, yeah, we met you and then like Timo, I think somehow eventually was, he was already living in, I don't know the times, but like, so then it kind of like, they had that one spot too, with the ledges that was kind of like, by there like a i'm oh. not good with oakland but like uh green ledges yeah no. there was like the tranny to barrier and stuff and then it, there was pillars and all kinds of stuff kind of by the train so it was right behind like a best buy i think or something yeah before like by emeryville yeah it was just there was some gaps like the flat gaps yeah 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 raymond data yeah. yeah what a sicky and speaking of Ramadetta and back to Double Rock. <laughs> if we're all over and that's fine. Whoa, dude. Like maybe one of the sickest kickflips I ever seen. I, I went there. I left my wallet there or something. Not the roll inside, but the other side, like the bigger one. I just see this kid just and catch a kickflip and then go higher. And like Pete dude. had such a good kickflip. He probably still does. But wow. Yeah. But um, But yeah, here's some pictures right here. Can you see those? That's me yeah, and yeah. at Border Town, one side just barely going, and then the other side. Rad. Just, uh, very long time ago. <laughs> Dude. And this is so just for time reference, is that before or after Myrtle Creek? It's after, right? 
Oh, be- way before. Oh, really? Yeah. Border Town was uh, 04, summer oh. of 04. And then I didn't. And then Myrtle, Myrtle Creek or St. Helena? Myrtle Creek was 08. Myrtle Creek was after St. Helena? Myrtle Creek was before St. Helena. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, and that is that where it did you work on Myrtle Creek with Bino and uh, Snowman and stuff? Uh, Myrtle, no, Snow wasn't there. He was in St. Helena. Oh, that's right. Who is on Myrtle Creek? Oh, shit. Me, Bino, Gut. Gut? Wait, no, no. Myrtle Creek. I get the two mixed up because they're both like the two. Uh, pri- well, I was there. Grindline was great. I was on the road for three years with, with that with that that crew. Shaggy was my boss. All oh, cool. Time, but Myrtle Shaggy's Creek was me, Bino, Shaggy, Sky Thompson, this kid Quakes. Shout out. Maybe it was just five of us. I'm really curious because like Myrtle Creek, every time we go to Portland is a mandatory stop, even if it's for just five minutes to show people that have never been there, but we usually go there to skate. How did it evolve? Like, how did that whole thing, is it true? I get it mixed up because Dylan was a similar thing where I think they found a pipe and then they said they wanted to work around it. Like, how did those pipes get? utilized in myrtle creek was that from the conception or did that come as you were building that that was oh man they're so bummed that's straight from uh, shaggy's brain we they were just um they were kind of parked over in this field in myrtle creek there were three of them maybe there was even more and you know we were probably just doing layout and stacking dirt there was i don't think there was a real plan for that park um but Shaggy's seen them and he's like, let's put these in the park. Oh, and so we built around those pipes and without permission, kind of because the, <laughs> the, the money that funded that park came from parents of these kids who were unicycle kids. Oh, I shit you not. These kids raised and formed a committee with their parents and they wanted this street kind of park with rails and they wanted to do their unit unit tricks. And, you know, that really wasn't going to fly with, you know, what Shaggy's program was. <laughs> oh my God. That park's gnarly too. That one pocket wall is like anything on that is respect. Oh, like the, the Roman end. With the, yeah. Like a vert. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we built footers for those for those um, pipes and had these guys, I think, from the city, and um, we just kind of rolled them onto these big footers and started started from there. You know, Sky did all the welding. He welded up all the steel, and then, you know, Shaggy just kind of, it was all his, it was his, that's, that's Shaggy's ball, 100%. Wow. Yeah. It's a cool one. It's super like if you haven't been to Myrtle Creek and you're going up a uh, highway five through Oregon, just Google maps it and fucking make a stop. It's definitely worth like, it's definitely not your normal skate park and it's, it's really rad and fun as shit. And uh, the funny part too, like, I don't know if you're in on this, but like for sure me and Joe Brooke always trip on it because we've done so many Oregon trips. Like that was our go-to like every year we're going to go camping and skate parks in Oregon. And why is every goddamn skate park near a dairy queen? It's like, (laughs) turn left at the dairy queen. Like those are always the directions. I don't know, but they've got more Dairy Queens up there than we have in <laughs> down here, you know? <laughs> For sure, dude. We did a blizzard uh, trip where every day you had to get a blizzard. It was so gnarly. <laughs> I love DQ. I really like tacos. I worked with one and back in normal when I was like 17. It was, I loved it. You know, I would take home the frozen chicken patties back to the fort and uh, cook them on the stove and just like, <laughs> what is Myrtle Creek like? Where do you, where do you if you have to like go through every park you've worked on? Um, does one stand out? I mean, besides Treasure Island, because that's kind of your newest baby type thing. But like in the building, you know, through all those ones, is one like that's that yeah. was the best time of my life, or like that one turned out the best, or like anything like that. 
as far as uh like you mean like the good times and the crew and like what yeah we got? like dude this i oh, would take H-Town. this houston. which one houston oh the, really h-town yeah houston i haven't been to that one it's got the large the world's like the country's largest cradle it's 20 feet tall that's the one where the whole cityscape is in the background right yeah, yeah. i was on that there was 12 of us we had two grind line houses and um that park was going and then at the same time galveston was going uh so shaggy's crew was up in houston and then i can't they definitely made a trip up and helped us with some flats and then when um when houston was done that was like a seven month project six months mm. um, some of us went down to galveston to help finish up and that crew was hubbard fergie um dog boy Fuck. kyle gallagher and then timo was there shout out he was in houston too but i think they split once houston was getting a little closer to done they took some of the huge h-town dudes and brought them to galveston uh-huh and that i mean it was just i mean between houston and galveston like whoo th- those were the two ones like well, is Houston kind of like Louisville where it's just so big that it's like an impressive thing that you finished? Yeah, it really is. I was like, in- how does it measure against Louisville? It's smaller, but it- Louisville is the biggest, right? Is it still the biggest? It might be. Well, this uh, Houston number two might be bigger. I'm oh, not really? sure. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm not sure. But uh, Houston one, you know, it's got two cradles. It's got the a huge vert 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 bowl that's like 12 feet tall with four two or three feet of vert it's got a big ass kidney damn um i think Hasoy might have had a cover in that kidney there's but it's right downtown like we we would go to lola's almost every night for happy hour was like dollar 25 mixer drinks like <sighs> five to eight and like that's where tex hung out like todd prince and ken Fillion and oh shit that was like the skater bar and um i'm uh interviewing text tomorrow you are yeah i ask him if he remembers uh remembers regular rg josh because um <laughs> regular guys um he was a badass and they 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 were sick they had a band called bark card and huh. I, they played in galveston it was grind lines it was hubbard's first show and like no it, way Fucking that shit, shit, dude. Wait, Grindline's first show ever? Yeah, it was it was in Galveston, Texas. And we no were way. I would have thought it would have been in Seattle. He might have. That was when he was still recording everything on the four track and playing all the instruments. Ah. Uh-huh. The, the house in Galveston had one or two bedrooms, but one bedroom was designated strictly for the jam room, like drums everything like you can sleep in here but this is the jam room and so dudes had air mattresses in the living room and i I think i slept in the closet down there once i went but um that was right before skate rock did he have he have songs with lyrics or was he just playing instrumentals it was all the lyrics you know like dirty needles and like um he had those i've got lyrics written down that from then i've got four pages of his handwriting with the lyrics that he like left on the refrigerator and I grabbed him when, when the job was done, you know, like, like, I don't know where they're, they're, they're around here. So I got a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah. I have the same thing. Like every time Jake wrote something um, like for a junk drawer or like something like that. And he gave it to me to put, I kept it. So I have like a binder of all of his like writings and stuff. It's really special to me. Do Hubbard, I know these people are epic. And so this is a tough question, but I'm wondering if something sticks out to you that is something that you could share about Hubbard or like working with him or advice or just anything cool. I mean, the dude was cut from a a unique cloth, no doubt. We got to, I got to do, I filmed that whole thing of them working at the hunters point one. And that was so fucking epic. Like him and Jake together was like, <laughs> dude, it was the fucking best. They should have made a reality show. Yeah. I mean, nothing but love for Hubbard. Nothing but love. And honest to God, 100% right there. Like, 
Galveston, Texas, Hubbard taught me how to operate a concrete pump. Oh. I operated that pump for the remainder of that job, which was responsible for placing all the over the, the cradle and um, the street course. So long story boring. Um, Hubbard taught me how to operate the concrete pump. And that is what I do today. Like that yeah. has, I did, I did a couple of jobs and operated the pump. And then it was like, it took me 10 more years before I actually got a job doing it. But as of like five years ago, get it into the operators union and becoming a pop pump operator. It all goes back to that park and Hubbard spending three days with me and teaching me how to set it up, how to attach the, the, the concrete hoses and how to clean it out. And like that, it's something that I'm so fucking grateful for because yeah, I have a family and that puts the fucking bread on the table. Okay. And did that happen before Alcatraz? Did that open that Alcatraz job up? Everything from Grindline opened up every door afterwards. Like every like job experience I got from like, I mean, Shaggy brought me on. I, I was so fucking green, really. Like I'd only done DIY shit at Border Town. So I wasn't even really a finisher. And like, you know, I, you know, I build jump ramps and shit. But as far as like learning how to operate equipment, how to like, fucking set a form basically all comes from like grind line and like shags and like the dudes who were that had experience already like matt gadsby and you know bino and i started kind of at the same time and like timo and then fuck man like so many people were influenced influenced me to like the little b i mean just like the whole family i I don't know. Not too many people can probably say that they learned how to run in the pump from, from my old Hubbard, but it's something that I'm going to keep, you know, I've got it. Yeah. Right now I'm on a little hiatus from it because it's slow, but I've been doing that for like five years. Wow. Yeah. And like jamming with him and Galveston, like playing drums and like, I thought, dude, I thought I was going to go. I thought I, I thought I was going to go out and be the drummer on that, but uh, uh-uh, I, I stayed and finished the park. And I remember that day him and doggy took off like, <laughs> you know, that was probably like the closest, you know, after that we would see each other, but like those two months or so down in Galveston was just like, I learned so much from just from that one job. Pretty special. You know, I got a funny story. Shaggy, if you're listening, you're going to remember this. We were, uh, <laughs> We were getting hammered one night. Shaggy had uh, Shaggy had uh, the RV going, and he comes in there. He's on fire. He wants to fight everybody, right? And, you know, Bino flips him over and breaks the table, and, like, everyone just whatever. Like, we're just going for it. Well, he was pissed at me, and then, like, the next day, I'm like, fuck this motherfucker, Bino. Let's get him. Let's get him on this site. I got $100. If you fucking tackle him in the mud, I'll give you $100. And I, he's like, all right. Bino takes my 100 and like it's around about, I mean, job side hits are going down. And I, Shaggy's kind of talking to me, and like Bino's up on the hill, kind of where the deck is now, you know. Mm-hmm. And like, he fucking runs down, k-doosh, k-doosh, splash, fucking <laughs> ragdolls Shag right into the thing. And he gets up, <laughs> you know, like, and then a couple hours later, these fools come back and grab me and they're dragging me across the thing and put me in the water. Well, it, it fucking turns out Bino goes to Shags and was like, hey, Josh gave me a hundred dollars. He wants me to tackle you. And they're like, so they made a deal. Shaggy knew about it. They split the hundred bucks. Shaggy let Bino tackle him. And then they fucking got me. Like, oh, that's man. the kind of shit like. That's the kind of shit I was at. That's what I meant. That's what I was looking for. Dude, I miss those fucking days. Like, and in, in Houston, just like we had a quarter pipe, <laughs> we had a quarter pipe in front of the house that we would skate, and like, it was the last pour. So we all like go to Lola's after the pours. Me, Matt Gasby, Shaggy, um, fuck, who else was in the back? Maybe Fergie. I had this Honda Civic, and we just get so hammered and. uh we come back to the house and like there's and we're we're fucking I'm driving through bushes and tree and like here's the quarter pipe 
and we turn the corner. I just get the car going at like top speed and smash through the quarter pipe, sending it down the street. And they're like, what the fuck? Like we got weed, we got everything in the car and uh, uh-huh. go back, go park the car. You fucking idiot. And like, we go park the car and like, we're so out of our mind. We go to the skate park and climb these trees. And we're like, we wait in the trees. Like, I don't know for how it seemed like forever, but we thought the cops were going to come. We ended up like, oh, it was the best man. Like it was the best Texas. Yes. My favorite park of, of that tour, you know, but hot as shit, right? Like it's like a hundred plus days. How the fuck are you doing? Like manual labor in that heat. Are you working at night mostly with lights? No, we just grind it out during the day. Like we would work, I guess we would work until it got real hot and then go take, take a break, like a couple hours, maybe go get lunch. And then, you know, like maybe from 11 to one or something or two, we would take it easy. And then, we go back and finish up, but just drinking lots of water and just, just taking breaks and shit. But yeah. Did you ever work with Sage? Oh yeah. Sage Bullyard. Oh yeah. I, he's one of my friends for sure. I keep in, I check in on him maybe once a month or so. And he's huh. a character. I went to Israel with that dude for three I love months. That guy's funny as shit. I love Sage. I mean, I got, yeah, I went to Israel with him for three months. Oh, did you work on the Israel park? The, la- the last ones in 17, turning 2018. Damn. Was Hubbard there too? No. He it was there. you and Sage? It was me and Sage and... Rabbi? No, no. It was Sage's jobs. We did two oh. parts, and um, they were kind of back-to-back. Uh, Natanya, which another, if you ever get to go there, that's, the park is right on the Mediterranean. It's like right across the street from, from the sea. And uh, it's fucking beautiful, dude. How gnarly is Israel? Like what's the process getting there and stuff? Like, is it, is it any, it has to be a little different than a normal place, right? Yeah, it was. And that was like um, getting there. I had no idea what I was getting myself into really. Like, I just knew that to get to the airport, and I was so baked, dude. And like, <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea, but it, it was pretty easy. You know, you go through and you check your tools, and you just, it was pretty, pretty straightforward. I'm what, pretty sure Jake went there, and he, when he came back, he told me he got into a taxi to go to a certain place, and they were like, I can't, I'm not going to take you there. It's too gnarly. And he's like, Take me there. And oh, he, because he wanted to see it, I forget what the place was, but I think it was some area where maybe the war was or something where he just wanted to like, Jake always wanted to test boundaries and do the shit you're not supposed to do. But uh, yeah, Israel sounds fucking crazy. It's it's where you put yourself, I guess. You know, they do have, I think it's called like the Green Line. I once like I didn't really pay attention to the what what's going on really, you know. But uh-huh. there is like there is a boundary, like an invisible boundary that you don't go to maybe. And maybe that was it then. And, um, you know, you just don't go over there, I guess, but uh, Jake, you fuck that. I go wherever I want. Everybody's all, Hey, I'm a skater. You don't tell me shit. <laughs> what, what? Give me something. What was it like you and Sage in Israel? Uh, <laughs> we get real bored. Like, like I wasn't drinking on that job. I had like, just got like, a year down of not drinking. Oh. So it was like, we made a fart sucker. Oh, you like, out of uh, your mind. You know, he's obsessed with farts. He loved like, a lot of farting. And he was <laughs> like, I think one of the quotes was, well, you can just suck a fart out of my ass if you don't like it. And so <laughs> we got this funnel and we taped, we just made a fart sucker and you put it over your mouth. And I don't know, that's ridiculous. But seeing him naked. What is happening? Like, drop trial like where he felt like like <laughs> sweetest guy oh love man him. love him sage and, is uh, the best i gotta try to get him on here one day come on yeah though like you work together you live together you eat together like when you do a grind line job you are married mm. you are all married and that's how you fucking live like you're you have each other's backs no matter what but you go through these kind of phases like you're so stoked you're on the job. Yeah, what's up? Ah! And then you start working and then shit gets 
you fucking uh, and then you get stoked again and then like then you start getting to skate shit that you build like then it gets funny and then then the job's done like yeah that's the beauty of it just like knowing that you might be uh getting annoyed with each other but you fucking have each other's back and you, you're just part of that fucking crew that you just maybe did something that somebody never thought could be possible because they've been trying to get this park for years and years and years and they're raising money. And now you're in like this foreign land and like, uh. it's just different. Concrete's different. The weather's different. Like the language barrier is different, but then like you're done and like you made the impossible possible. Now you've stoked out so many, so many people and like, yeah, <sighs> fucking sick. And right. Especially over there. And I've gotten to go to Egypt I went to Egypt twice and I got to build a park there at this damn this old like this sports camp for like Muslim and Christian kids and I went there in 2010 maybe with Tim Trudell shout out uh Josh Satan shout out Ben Smith shout out there was four of us and we <clears throat> built this fucking um built this park from ground zero in like 4 weeks oh wow and like Egypt, dude. Egypt, dude. Like <laughs> pyramids and shit. It was, <laughs> fuck, dude. How did they get there? Ah, they started at the top. <laughs> they built from the top. But yeah, man. Sage is the best. And then Bod came out on the second. Old man Bod back, huh? Life is like, uh, I'm not trying to be philosophical, but it's like a choose your own adventure book. And every time you turn the page, I choose like to open the door that I don't know what going to be behind it type of deal you know and i feel like that's just the way to go when you when you're going to do shit like this just like take a chance man who cares if it doesn't work it's gonna it'll work out eventually you know like don't give up dude i've been thinking about making a choose your adventure book i think it oh, would yeah be, i think it'd be so Remember those books huh those were sick right like oh so sick and i feel like it was like kind of influential and like teaching you kind of like not to always go for the ice cream like yeah that might be the best idea like the most desired but it, it's gonna lead down a bad path like you know that kind of vibe how cool would it be to have these avenues but make it like kind of from our world and our mind and stuff like that i think it'd be pretty neat i just want to make a book that before i die i need to have a book and i don't care if it's just only one copy for me. I just want to make a book. Like I'm not trying to like be the next Judy Bloom or fucking. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> sick. I like yeah. to do something with like some short stories. You know, just like right. Different. Now there's so much in our brain. Oh, it's crazy. A ton of stories. Just like being a traveling and being at the mag and filming and just documenting. Like mm. we work uh, really well with boredom. Like we we create a lot of things like, you know, P-Stone taught me that game drinking game where it's like, you don't, you learn never to say the word what, because if you say what crack, the, oh, beer, yeah, yeah. the beer cracks open and you're an idiot. <laughs> and so there was always like, Hey Schmitty, how do you, how do you say like, um, baby, I bet. and you're like, what? And you're like, Sky! and you're like, Fuck! <laughs> and no matter what, like you're sleeping and he'd wake you up. If we get past 1 30 a.m., look out. There was always these tricks involved, and it was just so fun and, and crazy. But these are all part of just being on the road and having downtime and not having much to do and figuring out ways to make every moment like special. And I just I really think that you know, in our world, like the people that we're involved with and all that stuff just the characters and the stories and all that stuff. It's just, it doesn't, you know, you can't like Jake used to always say, you cannot write this shit. Like you can't write it. And I was like, yes, you can. After it's done, we can write it. <laughs> so fucking love it. Hey dude, let me take a quick piss break and then we'll oh, do a little more. Okay. All right, cool. Oh, you're back. Back. And we're back. 
God, getting warm down here. Woo. Oh. Hey. I'm throwing my Frisco boxing hat on here. Shout out to Coach Art. Over Shout Frisco out. Frisco boxing. He's, a, he's the best. So, can I do a little? Third Street? No, the, yes. Yes. During the um, lockdown, because I go on morning walks every morning before everyone gets up and I just so I can get some exercise, I would walk down third and one day out in front of there, they built this fucking like wooden patio or whatever and just hung the um, punching bags and shit uh-huh. so you could be outside and still work out. And shit. I was like, these guys rule. Yeah, man. It, it, I haven't been in over a year, but. Definitely, uh, it's good, good exercise to keep your mind right, you know. But uh, yeah, <laughs> and this is really cool. I'm glad. I'm glad to be here, Schmitty. Thanks for asking me on the show. Like, um, it's it's fun to just kind of provoke the stoke, provoking the stoke. I'll hype it up. Get people out there, build more shit. You know, don't don't wait in line and just uh, you know do it and then. Uh, see how it goes um when i talked to you about doing this you said you you've listened to a bunch of the uh episodes and stuff you you listen to them on your drive or something down to san Jose sometimes yeah um i these days i've been uh, driving and working down in san jose so it's about a 45 minute huh. commute and um i haven't listened to all of them but definitely uh any stick uh, out like you got a favorite Oh, uh, Freddie Gall. You ain't ready. <laughs> Badass, dude. Saving those people in the fire and just uh, like, building and just being just like, I've never met him, but I, man, like I'm, I'm friends with Chris Nirocco and he's out in New Jersey too. And like, mm-hmm. I want to go visit him and then I'd love to see some of Freddie's stuff like under the bridge. And I uh, hear it's really fucking pretty cool. You know, he's and, got a good thing going out there and he's been yeah, sober dude, and like just sick. Yeah, it's really inspirational. That dude was, I said it before, I was like, I don't rank my friends in the pile areas, but Freddie was a good partier. He knew how to (laughs) fucking really turn it up. And for a guy like him, Andy Royce, same class, where it's like, these guys have fucking shut it down and and walked the sober path. It's like, I... I just look at it like, dude, anybody struggling, look at their story and that could give you some hope. Yeah, for sure. Then I listened to Chris Stropel's What a Badass. How the hell do you know? If you want to talk about the first DIY, that's like those dudes climbing 16 foot ivy fences to drain a pool and like keep it under wraps. That's the that's, shit. No, I know. And creating the alley-oop. What like you you invented the alley oop? It's like what the fuck, dude! <laughs> and the first <laughs> photo ever on the mag. Come yeah, on, yeah, like that's man. you can never. I told him I was like, for the rest of your life, you can kook it, you could do whatever, and they can never take that fucking mag away from you. It's 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 not like the internet where we can just take it off. You know, like gone. No, this is in print. Yeah. It's forever. And I'm like, dude. That's insane. So. Just his like, I mean, such a humble dude. Just like, yeah, was so. And what was it? Is it true? So he was a tracker dude and was riding indies on that cover. Yeah, that's. And <clears throat> I guess Grasso came up with that um, theory that that's maybe part of what <clears throat> put it over the top as like, let's get him on the cover to fuck. I don't know if that's true or just a urban legend, but uh, it is true that he was riding Indies and he rode for tracker and fuck tracker forever. Sorry, tracker, Larry, but uh, (laughs) (laughs) it's like, Oh man, I was so, I want, actually I want to hit him up later in life and just be like, let's just talk about tracker today. (laughs) Oh shit. (laughs) Let's go to fucking, <clears throat> the island let's go let's let okay so i was thinking about this right you did alcatraz oh yeah that was fun you timo bino who what was the crew for that so i seen the ad on craigslist and believe it or not like at the time like it was probably like a pretty sought after thing it's on craigslist like who wants to go to the island drill do concrete forming and do matching um 
you know, to match and preserve what was built in the 1900s. And so, like, I had Liz, you know, um, my sweetie. I'm like, Liz, she is like, did the legwork. She is really the backbone behind that. So at the time, the, the response from Craigslist was down to the company spectrum that was hiring. And they didn't have, they weren't getting any input from, from that ad. And Liz went directly to them and sent my resume to them. So I was not patting myself on the back, but that's how that went. She got the resume to them. And then I was, um, I was uh, interviewed and like the first one to get hired or whatnot, and then brought bot out. Like we have Ryan McWhorter that wasn't working or doing parks right then. So he came and worked for a couple of weeks and that was just kind of like setting it up, kind of doing some site protection. And then um, we brought Ben Smith. And then from there, it just, it was just on like Albino, uh, Mo. And then it was Chris Lindig, Johnny Martin, uh, this guy, Casey Watson, who's a good friend of Johnny and Chris's, like they're in the same, same, like, uh, family. And this was, was yeah. all, it was all the night shift, right? You guys were working like 11 PM to like 5 AM or something, right? Yeah. We would catch a ferry at nine 45 and then we would get dumped off and then we get back and they'd pick us up right before the first tour. It was either seven or eight. And then, <laughs> and then it was Tony Alvarado. Um, Is that Tony Loco? No, oh god, dude. I got some <laughs> stories about old looks. You know that he lived with me for a while, but we don't have like we could go from Alcatraz back to that warehouse if you want, but fucking Tony Loco, Batman, motherfucker, dude. He came and lived with me for a minute after Anna moved out, and he, you know, we were we we're doing some shit, and I would fucking come home some nights. And the place would be pitch black and there'd be a candle. And he listened, be listening to Joy Division skating my ramp in full Batman gear. Like, well, I would come <laughs> home and like the lights would be off. And then I would turn around and he'd be like flashlight under his face. <laughs> yeah, I'm Batman. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. And he would just go out at night. Did like, he get it from Cyrus or what? what was going on? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but he would sit and tinker and he had this little utility belt that he made, you know, like, you know, those little plastic cases you could put your traveling soap in and he painted it yellow and he had little, little trinkets and he would go out and he's like, I just go out at night and I just, I perch, I'll go and perch. And like, he actually made it on top of the Oakland Tribune building, <laughs> Batman gear. And Sam Cunningham was the one who saw an article in the paper about <laughs> Batman spotted. And like, <laughs> is, that, is that real? Like he got in on the roof and spotted and like made it out of the building without ever being caught. I'm so hyped because I didn't know that story at all. But you Albino, uh, no, Albino was like, he was cooler when he was Batman. And I was like, I didn't even ask, like, what was Batman? Like, I didn't know. I thought that was his nickname, but he actually was Batman. <laughs> he, he was Batman. And Frank's got this story where, like, oh, my God, he pulls up to an event or something. His girlfriend drives him up, and, and Tony's in Batman gear. And he gets his boombox out, and he comes out and stands on the, the hood of his car, in Batman gear, and he presses the soundtrack, and he starts doing the dun 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 dun, and like <laughs> at an event, dude, like I don't know, like an art show or something. And oh Frank, my Frank god, had that story that. <laughs> oh boy! But I spent like Tony and I were we used, we hung out a lot back in like the early two thousands. Like I filmed a lot of shit for like uh, the the uh, sacrifice video. Oh really? Uh, if you ever seen his part. Build them at Vagabond. There's been a lot of pools that were really good that were skated in our lives, but Vagabond was definitely one of them. Yeah. I made some trips down there. Yeah. Oh, it was a good one. It was a good time. 
Well, let's hear about this fucking night shift on Alcatraz, because I don't know much details except for I know that Timo used to send me photos of the sun coming up on the ferry. And I was like, what the fuck are you guys doing out there? I never really got the and even Albino, I don't think you really explained what you were doing. Oh, man, it was like, were you refurbishing the jails or it was so the main um, retrofit project was in the in the shower room and then in the dungeon. So we got to, we got to be in the dungeon. So the dungeon is, was the first floor of the original military prison. It's the Citadel. Mm. That was like, it was a, um, I guess it was a ground level, but then they built the, uh, the prison on top of it. <clears throat> so this, the dungeon was like the f- actual first military prison. So is the dungeon underwater level below mm-hmm. sea level? No, it's like, it's like in, it's in the actual in the, uh, Island yeah. above. Okay. And so that all needed to be like, so all the structural like I beams down there, you know, it was all constructed and mixed with seawater. And then um, like all the busted bricks from, I guess it, the dungeon was the dungeon and they took, they cut off the first floor and they used all those red mortar bricks and seawater to make the concrete for the, the actual Alcatraz prison. Uh huh. So all that seawater was like, um, like, fuck dude. It was like from day one, it had been eroding all the steel. So the steel had become like super flaky. We start cutting like the concrete, like dude, that fucking building is a motherfucker. It is strong. Like, we would have to saw cut through these concrete I beams and like, like areas you could flick off with your, with your finger and shit was chipping off. But like to cut through it and a jackhammer, it was like, the shit was still pretty. I mean, it was, it's strong in that sense, but like all that salt water had eroded the steel. And um, I guess the, the Island was kind of, the cell was raising possibly from the reaction of like expansion so mm. the 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 cell house was starting to raise and they wanted to like prevent that so we, we we jackhammered all that and cut all that old steel out and then the shower room was kind of the same thing all the columns and pillars in there needed to be cut out you know like each one had a different schedule for what needed to be done as far as the repair so we would cut a lot of old concrete away and then put um plates like weld plates to reinforce it and then we got to to pour report it and then patch and make it match um how they did the forms in the 1900s and stuff but so that work was i mean it was pretty gnarly and then you know Do we you were, get like was it good work though like are you working for the 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 city or the state or something like are you getting like good pay and good benefits or is it yeah yeah we I was there for 13 months. I don't think, I don't, I can't remember if we got benefits or not, but it was through the parks. I think it was a parks job. So it was prevailing wage. We were making, huh. we, we would work four nights, 10 hour nights. And then after taxes, it was like 1600 bucks a week for four nights of work. Oh, damn. Dude, talk about fucking, I, I saved up some money. Yeah. And it was like, while Liz was pregnant. So Oh my God, dude. Like I was out there at night and then, um, then pepper came and I think I worked, it was like six more months. And then, um, but the work, dude, it was fun. Like we were all having a, like, it was a good time, but the history know, is insane, right? Like, like spooky. did you guys ever try to get a skate session out there on the trainees? Um, I never, I never brought my board out there, but I remember, I remember Jake had an idea that he, he's like, Hey, you think we could do, he wanted to like do like a skate thing out there. He's like, you think you could get us out there with like plywood and t- cause they got those big block stairs in the back and uh-huh. the shit that if you kind of could site protect, you could probably make a pretty sick article. Just like, oh, did you, know. did you find the area? I've never even been out there you since like I, I've been out there when I was young, but like before I knew about like Gons and Tommy and shit, like, did you see the area where they actually skated? Oh yeah. The, it, the pivot, the Gons pivot is out in the rec yard. Dude, uh-huh. the, 
the fact that he even got into pivot position, the tranny is like, you know, it's like, and then the wall's like, you know, the wall's probably three feet tall, but the tranny's probably like six inches. So he, he basically had to like Wally, like smash into that, like, and it's uh-huh. so stylish, right? Like that's an iconic photo for oh, sure. I got it on my wall. Yeah. It's and, and you're just like, he, like to see it for the first time, the photo is like, the photo is gnarly, but the actual feature is like, Whoa. Like, Sometimes you have to go there in real life to see like that, you know, it's like China banks. People look at photos and they're like, oh, that's cool. And then you go there and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. This motherfucker just ollied the big bench. I saw that. That is impossible. Even after you see the footage, you're like, that's not that's not. Uh, Did you I, film that? No, oh. <laughs> my wish. It's so gnarly, dude. T-Funk. Big props, bro. That's fucked up. Shout like, out. Jesus Christ. Well, yeah. um, let's get into the uh, other island, <laughs> Treasure Island. Yeah. Have you ever, before we go to Treasure Island, though, have you ever camped on Angel Island? No, but I hear you can. Is there yeah. like, like, you could take bike rides out there too, maybe? Or Yeah, there's a ferry that'll drop you off. You can camp there um, because there was fires there like a few years ago. You can't have fires out there anymore. So it's kind of like, eh, like it was pretty sick to like wake up and have the city. You know what I mean? Like it's a cool spot, but like n- no fires is kind of rough because then after dark, you're just lantern or whatever but uh so, yeah i don't know <laughs> you, you, me and, you know, uh what's up with treasure island though how did that how did that even come onto your plate did it did it start renegade style and then it became what it is or yeah um i gotta give props out to victor ramos shout he, out he is the guy who actually was there with he's this this homie from napa and he went out there first and like brought him and his his buddies uh, Dino and oh fuck I, I don't know all the buddies they're they're friends with 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 J Boy and um, mm. Johnny Boy and shout uh, out J Boy shout J-Boy. out and um, they were bringing out like homemade parking blocks and stuff and like Johnny took me out there I was like whoa this place has a lot of potential Victor and it was only like it it was a whole year later before anything popped up and that came from you know once again like mickey dude he's all like i don't know like i've always been like he's been my friend forever and so real quick like deluxe was doing the build project you know the bucket and mickey hit me up and he's like hey do you want to do a video for us for this i'm like oh sure i got an idea i've been wanting to do this thing for a minute and that was kind of what really re-stoked my building love and like was those deluxe videos. I mean, goddamn deluxe. I love you guys. Thank you, Jimmy, Tommy, John, Frank, Graham, anybody ever fucking love more than those guys right there. So Jeremy McNamara came over and he's like, Hey, you know, I first met him. He's like, I'm like, I got an idea. I'm like, I got this rainbow rail. It's like a square tube rainbow rail that I got from Ferris. Like I want to put this in between a gap. And that's going to be our our clip, and we're going to dress like construction workers. Like we're going to put our hard hat on, we're going to pull up to the spot, and we're going to just hide in plain sight. And so we did that one. I don't know if you saw it or not. It's kind I of I think I did. Kind of funny, but was just, Albino involved with that? Not that one. And like I just I went over there the day before, and I I dug the holes out and I covered them with leaves. And then so the next day, um, when Jeremy and I went back there, I had mixed the concrete in buckets and shit in my backyard. And we went over there and like, he just, we did it in like fucking 15 minutes and we stuck it in there and it was like, Hey, you know, if you want to, you know, do something, just put your hard hat on and your vest and hide in plain sight. And so I got real stoked on that. And, uh, like, okay, we gotta, that's like, you want to do that. If I wanted to do another one and, it happened right after I went to Israel. So that was before Israel and then came back after that three months. And like, I was just like, Oh my God, this is like, I'm fucking so I just want to build again. And so we did the ledge and like uh, hit under, made a little blue, like camping tarp, like a homeless thing. And like, okay, today we're going to, we're going to disguise ourselves as like, homeless people we're going to make a tent and we're going to build this ledge under the tent under the freeway in oakland and like we kind of we did that and then so then like 
they want to do one more. I'm like, okay, like we got this spot over across from Eli's and we can build a hip and we'll just be skate. Like we did, there was no, like, there was no, like, and hey, we're going to do something. We're just, we'll just do it over here. Mm. There was already kind of like a quarter pipe in the ledge. And so long story short, that got busted right away. And that's the beginning of the dock that Jeremy made about treasure Island was that, that incident right there was like, we were getting tickets and we had this $500 budget to build something. And so, you know, we got busted. We had to take everything down and we're, we all go to, to get breakfast at the pretty lady. And I come like, Jeremy, you know, there's a spot on treasure Island. And I think if we go there alone and if we get tickets, it'll just be us. We don't have to have anybody, you know, there at the beginning. And so I think like a week later we went out there and, you know, Victor had been there with, and like, it was just a couple parking blocks and some rain, like an orange rainbow rail. And there you go. Then we stacked stender blocks and we fucking, you know, we liquid nailed them together. And then we drove around the Island and found some rock and rubble. And we threw that in there and we basically set that up in a bike one day. And so then I got George, George Roca and Adrian and I think Matt Gasby and then uh, Leon and um, we went and got a two yard carts and that was the 500 bucks. And like, it only took like needed like a half a yard cart. And like Leon towed, Leon towed the first batch of concrete to the Island. I don't, I don't know if you've ever met him. He's like skateboard dude. He Maybe. Does a lot of, uh, decks and he's a good dude. Um, yeah. And uh, he, we had too much. We had too much concrete. And Gadsby, who you know I've known since Houston, like what, mm, bless him, one of my one of my best friends. And he's like, go fuck, like he's so funny. Go fucking get, go get, go get that ready. You know, he's like, fucking idiot, you ordered too much. And like, you know, I still get the abuse. And so we made that front little thing. We made a pump bump, and we made the curb spine, and that was five hundred bucks. That wow. was what kicked it off. And then. I fucking broke my foot. Oh, working. I dropped a concrete hose on my foot and um, I was out. So I was out of work for like, you know, it was supposed to, could have been four weeks if I wanted to just let it heal, but I wanted to milk it. So I'm like, no, I want the surgery. I want to get a plate and straighten it out. And that gave me like, it ended up being like seven weeks off, but by the fifth week I was fully healed. That's how that started. Just like, huh. like I kind of knew it was there. And then the first pours was just, well, we got a skate park now. And then it just, it was so low key. It was illegal for a whole year. Uh. Then we got donations like 510. Ooh, fucking bless. And um, the luck. Andy, shout out. Shout, shout out. out. Five, one, oh. Yeah. Oh. And like, seriously, I mean, I mean, without the skate shops, no DIY is going to really be able to i mean they, you can do it but i mean the skate shops in, in any community are like the absolutely back, but, oh god i know this this has been really fun by the way but like but one weekend i'm out there by myself painting over graffiti and this dude mike i forget his name but he was a, a navy guy he's like the real estate manager for for treasure island for the navy's okay. property and, um he was actually like yo like I really like what you're doing, um, but you can't be parked in here. You can't drive your vehicle in here. And I, I can't say how long this will last, but if you can get as much done in the next year, I can try to do is like help you be able to keep it. And then he's like, I used to skate for Thunder back in the day, like no in the early way. 80s or something. And I can't remember Greenwald. I, no, that's this park builder. Fuck, I can't remember yeah. his name. So he was just like, just, do this on the weekends basically had given me a silent permission, uh, but I still, I didn't know it was going to happen. You know, I never knew. And Jeremy was, had only filmed that one little thing. And then he came back and started filming more, which became the documentary, which fucking blew it up. Like without that and deluxe's support, the donations that we've gotten in the last five years, like, who knows where the park would have ended? And then Rich Ravetti, shout, shout out. out. He's the deputy director of real estate for TI. Like he's in charge of everything that goes on there. 
And he he found out about it and he got in touch with Deluxe and the skate shop, like who's doing this? And then that word got back to me. And during that first year, I um, kind of started taking steps to get the border town nonprofit back in order in case the, in case like the park did get uh-huh. shut down. I had Bob, the lawyer working on stuff like that. So um, it really all just like w- a plan without a plan. And then when the day came, like we had to go in front of the city hall, like we were actually kind of ready with like some documents, like here's what we have. And this is what we're proactively doing to get, you know, if you have any worries, here's some proof to kind of set you at ease. And that's what we went over in Rich's office before City Hall. He's like, oh, man, this is great. It, just get your insurance and I'll show you how to do that. And he kind of just held our hand and it was just like, what the fuck is going on, bro? Like, you mean you're not going to tear it out? He's like, well, not yet. <laughs> and the rest has been great. Like, we've had... Oh my God. Like the amount of people that just stop by to skate, but end up helping. And like, I was, a, you know, it's fucking DIY. I would definitely vibed like, don't fucking post your shit. Like this is still, but kind of goes with the turf, but now like lightened up a little bit and like people have helped and like, it lets you really your imagination go wild. Like you gotta give a shout out to Julian with that new zone. Oh, definitely. And I will not leave him out. Julian is one of my fucking best friends. And like another, if you didn't know him. Like he's the sweetest dude. Seriously, Julian, love you, buddy. If you're listening, let's do some, let's keep it going. But yeah, Julian and deluxe, like, it's like, I want to build a mini ramp. I'm like, well, let's do, we looked at some other places and then we were at the Island and, like, what about right there? Is I going to fuck? I'm like, no, let's do Because we have permission. We can yeah. do whatever we want here. Full circle, though, you guys built the the mini ramp by the ballpark kind of first thing. And now well, you're building it. something similar to that out on the Treasure Island that's hopefully going to be yeah. there a little longer. <laughs> I think so. You know, they told me, and I don't want, I know we might be on a time crunch here, but um, uh they said maybe five or six more years, but I'm like, that's what you said five years ago, you know? Like, yeah. But no, I mean, you got, I think you like, you got people behind you. You've been doing it. You've been keeping it clean, which is super important. Yeah. Like Chico says, don't leave fucking messes where you skate. Don't Please. shit where you sleep. Like all that shit. Like kids, I know it's fun to party, but yeah. when you're done partying, clean up after yourself. Easy. Please. And Please. then the place is nice. Then when the people that care come by, it looks good and we can keep it going. That's right. And please keep the graffiti out of there. I mean, I love it. I love seeing it on buildings where I wonder how the fuck did you get it up there or a train car? But Mm. for DIY, it just, it's not the place for it. It'd be the most positive thing in the world, but we've got to keep it clean and we're going to cover it every time. And I've gotten people hating like, oh, it's part of the culture. Well, the concrete and a DIY is our fucking graffiti we put that there illegally and risked our shit Uh. that does not give you any kind of entitlement to paint on there because you want to be in the magazine possibly for background props or something but that shit is just like you're a kook if you do that wait for someone to ask you to paint at their spot you know just don't take it upon yourself because most of the time it's like shit what's the gnarliest thing you've seen go down there have you seen anything that's like me and Jake took Pedro Barros out there because we're like, nobody's 540 that wall. And we fucking you, you filmed that. You yeah. Yeah, God, yeah. yeah. I was, I was, I mean, I think I'd seen you and you said, Hey, there's going to be some treasure Island stuff coming. Yeah. In. Jake and called him and he's oh. like, you're flying up. We're going to do a day with Pedro and you're going to get a 540 on that wall. And it was like, oh. sure enough. I think, yeah, that on video or on, you know, that was probably the tail slide. The fucking uh, where the, the block oh, popped off yeah, because like I went out there one day and I seen on the ground I'm like what the fuck is so I thought somebody just mm. maliciously I didn't know what happened and then I seen I'm like well oh, fucking Pedro tail slid through that fucker like <laughs> that was the gnarliest I seen rainy fucking grind grind that wall mm. and Ollie into that quarter pipe no handed um but as far as like the like, Man, there's been some shit like in person. Got to, oh man, this one stands out. 
You were there. Remember when Sammy fucking nose blunt slid the top of the bank? Oh, yeah, yeah. He didn't even juice it up. He just fucking. Sammy Baca, shout out. Uh, shout like, out. That was one of the sickest things. And then, like, uh, seeing, seeing Jason, uh, he, he ollied the gap. I think it was his 50th birthday, maybe. Remember yeah, what, yeah, remember yeah. That? that was a fun one. That whole time you guys came out and Johnny Boy came and trimmed the tree and shit, that was. Mm. Holy shit. And then seeing like uh fuck, I don't know, seeing like I seen Peter's boneless. Like I've only seen pictures of it. And mm. it out there and I it? well, he boneless that bank and that guy just goes higher as he bonuses up. Like holy fuck, that's Peter Hewitt. A lot of this shit I build, like I'm I'm not a big training guy, or like but to live vicariously through someone who does skate that, it gives like okay this is where like this is worth it like I yeah s- i get to see the fruits shit. of your labor oh man yeah so it's it's ever evolving right like it, it's like yeah. build until they tell you to stop yeah and like i've I've taken kind of a back break on the last few weeks i've been up at up at tnt's building up some stuff mm. in the backyard and like Santa Rose. Yeah. Shout out to fucking Waylon Trujillo. Shout this, out. This just in another Trujillo yeah. ripper. Yeah. And he's such a fucking. Waynar. Yeah. He's so cool, man. Like, and Waylon's a longtime listener of the show. He's been listen. listening for a long time. Yeah. Right. Well, no, Trixie, Trixie would hit me up and she's like, Waylon loves it. He's listening <laughs> to the car. Just love it. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to I'm actually going up there today to work on if, uh, if they're oh. up for it. So oh, say what up? Yeah. It's all just been so doors just are just constantly open. And like, if anyone out there is doing like a DIY and they're getting frustrated, like, man, don't give up. Like just, if your shit gets broken down, like it's devastating, but just fuck man, find another spot, keep it going, learn as much as you can volunteer, go to your, you know, if there's a park being built in your town, go help them out. Like you never know where it'll take you, man. Just like, just, just keep an open mind and learn as much as you can. Like, I don't know. It's been really, I've been really lucky. I get to build stuff for my friends and I get to build stuff for free and I've gotten paid for it and I've got to travel and and I'm fucking, and it's it's been fucking great. Even like suffering under a tarp in 20 degree weather, scrubbing concrete for 16 hours. (laughs) Yeah. Never going to do it again until the next time you got to do it. So just embrace it. Have fun. Love it. (laughs) <laughs> and then what's up like january february or something you were saying are the is the anniversary coming up you're gonna have a big blowout party or something with bands and stuff hell yeah so um march 1st end of february is usually like our anniversary so um, valentine day just mark it down <laughs> february 14 kids february 14 kids gonna be a, a treasure on the massacre um, president's weekend yeah we uh we kind of didn't we we had a three-year anniversary which was sick and you know we we were able to um we raised enough money to pay our insurance that's one of the stipulations like we got a it's about three grand a year Mm. had that fundraiser and we we paid that and then then the covid hit and so we kind of didn't get to do a four so this five year is coming up and the plan is to have these last two features done, which is like a big, big deck over the new, um, the new hips that we just built and added on. And then I'm going to connect the bank to, to the mini, to where the mini ramp is now and kind of have some kind of like uh wall, wall ride tranny up there into like a, a waterfall into the park. And we've been really like taking out the old flat and replacing that and, I got a crew of dudes right now, like these young kids from Berkeley, Mac G, Ryan, Lily, Luna, Quentin, Lucien, Sam, Nate, um, Micah, like these dudes are like 18, 19, and like they are really, really rad kids. And they've been helping Jack Hammer all the flat and, you know, really just being inspired. They're buying floats and like, yeah, my homie Ryan, I want to say what's up. I'm stoked for you. He got met him at TI. I got him into pumping when he was 18 or mm. 17. He got a job at Berkeley Pumping. Now he is uh he just turned 19. They, he's in the full fully in the union pumping concrete and making like 
over 30 bucks an hour and he lives at home. He's no way. Me. Yeah. Good. God good. Shit. Is so, Aiden helping out? He's, he's helped a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. He's over at the shop, right? Break free. Oh, yeah. Break free. Shout Today out. I got to do the floors in there. Another like, it's yeah. Like, yeah, I did the floors in there. Hey, yeah. I keep think I keep saying it. We help each other. Everybody's helping each other. There's a community. We are tribal. We fucking stick together. And like you help me, I help you. And like, let's just go. Like, For that's sure. the whole thing with the skate shop mentality. That's so obvious to me. It's like, I make this, I sell it to you and you sell it to someone else. And we all win. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's rad. Like, I just love that shit. Like, I just want, I think it's the same thing as yourself. Whereas you want to make things to make enough money to make more. Like, you're not trying to get rich. You just want to keep it going. Like, it was like Jake used to say, we just keep us on the road. Like, whatever we're doing that's firing us up, we want it more of it. Like, when that job's done, we don't want post-job depression. We want another job. Exactly. I mean, like I'm stoked that there's a shop in downtown Oakland. It's on Webster. So it's like, if you're going to Alameda skate park and you're driving down Webster, boom, break freeze right there. You know, Uh, can and a bunch of us are doing this DIY thing for Thrasher, which has been super, like I'm learning a lot because I, I I never claimed like, I, I don't got that. I don't know. I, I traveled for my first time over under the, under the overpass and, and fucking big hungry. And, and the dudes were all stoked. Like they're like, Schmitty, here's how you do it. Not like vibing me that I didn't know I was doing, which made me feel good. But like, it's funny. Cause after it came out, there's this huge Ardex Bondo debate. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this is so funny. Oh, yeah. dude. Well, Ardex is a, is a product of concrete and why would you want to cross contaminate Bondo you know, Bondo is, has its place, but if you're doing concrete and you need to patch, you're gonna use you're gonna use Ardex. Yeah. You know, if you know what, you know, especially if if you don't want to saw cut into your existing ground and you have just like a little little bump at the bottom, you're not gonna. Bondo is fucking expensive, and you get like it doesn't. But I don't know. Ardex. I know Austin loves the Ardex and it's from his hometown. So we've just been running it, but <laughs> I, I I'm friends with a lot of different communities and s- different communities, Pat Lana coming in hot. And he's like, dude, <laughs> Ardex is not $20. And, and all of a sudden I Google it with the price tag instead of a screen grab. He's like, not in Atlanta. <laughs> I, was like, I love you, Pat forever. I love you, but like, this is just making me laugh. I love, I love laughing though. So let's pr- keep it coming. I operate on humor. Keep it coming. But I did, I just saw Austin last weekend and he he's, he's got a spot and he invited me. Season to- two, right? We're going to do this. Up in there. I it's think the- this week, maybe hopefully. Oh, no shit. I Let's mean- get out and build some shit. And I, I, I want to film some new series. I love Austin. He's so fucking rad. He has a lot of peace stone in him with his positivity. Like everything sucks right now. But for some, somehow he's going to make it seem like it doesn't suck. And I love people like that. Yeah, he's, he was red. He's, he showed me the spot he has in mind. It's like four blocks from his house. It's just this like four sided. Did you see it by chance? Like it's like this. Yeah, I think block. he sent me a one photo, but he was like, I'm going to send, I'm going to go out there and send a bunch of shit photos. And, uh, but I'm like, dude, I trust in you. We're, we'll be there. Like, the worst thing that could happen is I drive to St. Helena and skate for an hour and go back home. Like <laughs> I had a good day either way. I also got to give you mad love, dude. I really appreciate you all the time. Like that recently you, you went out and built a quarter pipe at Jason Jesse's and uh, it's, it's brought us a lot of fun skating to the, the scenic on the edge of America, as we call it. And yeah. one day I was down there and Jason was like, I want to skate more. My quarter pipes kind of like, I just wish it was wider. And, and without hesitation, I texted you. And I was like, dude, what's it going to take to make it wider? And you're like, I'll be there tomorrow. This is what I need. And it was just sick. Like, and it yeah. happened. And now it, the quarter pipes funner and Cranny's already like, I think we're going to build a hip next. And then like, a, and he's got his whole vision. I was like, here we go. Like we'll do the hundred dollar haulers every, every month or whatever. Yeah. Was a, I thought you were going to be there. That was a fuck. That was a fun day, dude, because <laughs> we get started. Like, Cranny was there and Jason was there. And like, you know, it was like we were making it wider and, uh, you know, we're just now getting it going. And then boom, all the all the power goes out. 
Oh man, it's always something. Turns out like a tree just like randomly fell on the power line and just knocked out the power for the whole, you know, whole neighborhood really. And so Jason's like, I'll go get my generator. And like, uh, I don't know, he maybe he got to the, his shop and he, he took a hit to nap or he was doing something, you know, and uh, it was gone for, you know, well, I've gone forever, but it was like, fuck, what are we going to do? And he's like, ended up just me and Cranny just got into the tequila. We start doing shots. Oh, yeah. Here comes the nice. Pretty soon, you know, and then Jason gets back and he's like, all right, well, we got to do, let's get it going. And we're all like eating mushrooms throughout the day and we're mixing <laughs> and like, the sun's going down and we're vibing and like we're mixing and we're throwing shit in the quarter pipe. And like, I don't know if you've taken mushrooms, you know, and like if you're doing stuff and then that, that vibe is just kind of circulating and we're, you know, Jason's cutting bags and dumping them in and then Cranny's out of water. And we're just, it was like, it was really fun. And the vibe, like you said, like edge of America, man. It always is. Jason brings, I mean, Jason and Cranny together is ridiculous as far as just like, there's no way you're not going to laugh. You're going to have a blast. And they both just are really thoughtful and caring. Jason's so hospitable with his things and property. Like you want to take my tractor for a ride? I'm like, sure. (laughs) And I've, I haven't known him for very long either. I living at the warehouse. I remember meeting him with through Ferris and like, he would, but like um, it was only probably in the last maybe two or three years that, uh, mm. you know, well, him and J boy are tight. So that like, he'd go visit him in East yeah. Bay and yeah. And like uh, just becoming friends with him and just another dude, you know, that's just like the best, like sweet, like misunderstood, you know, I'm very, very yeah. hospitable and like, you know, I, I, I haven't been able to get a hold of him later. I left part of my mixer stand down there. I need to, I need to get down there and get it. So, huh? Yeah. Or maybe we'll leave it down there and I'll take the mixer and we'll just add on some shit. That's what I'm thinking. And like, you asked me like, who was on my wall? And you know, like fuck Jason definitely. And like, now I'm friends. Like I've met people now, like who are like my homies who I did have on my wall. And it's just like, it. You, you're a kid. Always yeah. a skater is a kid at heart. And like, doesn't matter how old I am. If I, like uh, if I'm fucking BS and with TG, I'm still like, man, like you're my friend, but you know, like, yeah. What is the vibes? Like, how's life been with the kid? Like, like you going to keep going with the, are you building out of necessity partly now that you have a family and have to bring in money? Like how, what's, what's life like? Building's definitely like the, the, for the fun right now, like a TI is always on my days off to keep my mind right. And uh-huh. um, go up and, Right now, working on Tony's the last three or four weeks, it's just been like, man, he's he's really into it. He's a he's a solid worker, man. He cuts two by fours. He does, but um, the job now is like, you know, I just it's kind of unproductive driving a big rig with a drill rig, uh-huh. like pulling drill rigs around San Jose and okay, those set up. It's dude, you're a workaholic. Then you're just working all week to bring in the money, and then on your time off, you're working to build shit that people want to skate. Yeah. Yeah, Damn. Friday was yesterday. I got the day off. It was like my first day off in about twelve days. Not, oh. not like I mean that means you know not building up at T's or and like working for for my living. But uh-huh. you know, I just I don't know. I life's too short. I can't. I don't want to waste time by. That's you know, how I feel. The older we get, you just almost feel like it's deadline or something. Like we got to go. We got to get this shit done. <laughs> yeah, I just I enjoy it. You know, it's. Just in, in my nature, I guess, to just want to get shit done. I don't know. Hey, I feel like we're all addicts. We have addictive personalities, and then we just figure out what the best way to use our addiction is. Like in the beginning, we're going through all this process. Like I'm addicted to drugs. Oh, that's not a good idea. I'm addicted to alcohol. That's not a good idea. Maybe I'm addicted to building skate parks. That might be a good addiction. <laughs> it gets in your blood, and I mean, <laughs> oh my god, it's 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 the noises it's the it's the way the machines and the pump sound when you're pumping and like that gets in your blood a little bit and then it's like if you ever looked at concrete while you're mixing it or while it's flowing out it's like this living thing that's like as soon as it's it's bashed it's like moving it's changing from the like and then you're working on you don't see what's happening in front of your face and then boom, you're done. And then they, it's like, so, it's like turning liquids into solids, man. It's fucking magical. 
<laughs> All right. Top three spots to eat in Oakland. Oh, top three spots right now. We've been going to Northlight. It's on uh, Telegraph right next to Tattoo 13. They got really good burgers. Woo. Mm. Really good. Northlight. And then okay. I'm going to say Gus's on Broadway, fried chicken. Fucking A, fried chicken. And then Wally's for Mediterranean. It's over on San Pablo. It's right behind the bank club. It's like one of Oakland's oldest bars and um, big, big, good, good, good Mediterranean. Oh, man. Mm. Lentil okay. soup, baklava. It's, it's what's up with the, uh, what's that one called? Bake Sale Betty's, the chicken sandwich. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, a that's good. That's like a line before it opens every day, right? Yep, they've got really, really good strawberry shortcake. And <laughs> yeah, when we used to live at the, when we were at the warehouse, you know, Julian lived there for like, you know, we were roommates in Mo and Nagahara and Aaron Shaleen. We lived there forever. And like, that was kind of like, we would do house meetings and me, me and Julian would go down there and they'd make these pot pies, these chicken pot pies. And we'd I, love pot pies. I mean, big ones. And we'd cook them and we'd all eat them like, you Sick. know, like a house is house meeting. And like, would somebody fuck up now type of thing, but. Huh. Do you ever take the kid to Fenton's? Yep. She's been there. She's been there. That's, That's the place. ice cream fucking staple over there. Right. Is there a better place? No, Fenton's is. That's the one. That's the one, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. And have you been to Donia Tomas? No. That's right down from Fenton's. That's a really good, like, if you want to get your margarita on and like your Mexican cuisine, it's. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's like I don't know the East Bay too well. I to, honestly, I go over there to skate, but I don't like. I've gone a couple like nights to that uh, place where Ruben used to work, uh, Chez Panisse. That's oh, yeah. a fucking sick restaurant where they have the uh, scheduled meal every day. Like Monday, it's lighter. Friday, it's the heaviest, but it's a set menu and it's it's the Alice water. She she's, I mean, it's an epic spot. So it's like, if you got a little extra money, you want to go date night. That's a good one. I like, do you have the upstairs too? That's like really yeah. far yeah. out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. That's like, I am doing it. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't she, isn't she the chef that like brought, uh, gardening to the schools? Like uh huh. Yeah. She has books and shit and everything. That's a lot about organic stuff and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Liz told me about her. I would never have known about her unless, you know, my lady's from Berkeley. So, like, I, oh, okay. I've been able to, like, you know. Nutrition is important, kids. Let's keep the body healthy so we can keep doing the stuff we love. Right. Skate every day. <laughs> Don't take no for an answer. I tell you what, what you doubt yourself, set hey, I... a fucking life alarm and wake <laughs> up and get off your ass and make it happen. Nobody's going to do it for you. That's right. Right. Um, What's I forgot you lived at that place. What was the best memory of living with Naganarnar, Julian, that ramp, the rafters, fucking Max Shaft just skating it? Like what what was the best? Probably seeing <laughs> we had some good fucking parties there. Like yeah. We had shows and been like probably seen I seen Tony fucking uh do a King of the Road challenge. He covered his body with shaving cream and jumped and allied up to the rafter and let go. I remember that. The old monkey. <laughs> yeah. Um, I filmed Bob Bernquist go through the fucking bars. Know? Yeah. I'll tell you what, dude. I've, you know, in the epically later to, with John Cardiel at, at the end where he grinds the ramp, I was there. No Me, way. Own and, um, and Cardiel were there and Julian grabbed his camera and filmed like, and we like it was so rad. Like, and we were skating, and he got so amped, and he's coming up the stairs, dropping it, and like, he, I think that might have been his first grind. Was okay awesome. since the accident. Wow! Yeah, and, like, wow! See, like, I witnessed that, and that was just one of the great things. Like, it was fun. Like, <laughs> me and Julian just <laughs> he, his room was next to me. Like, text him, let's get coffee. You know, it was just it was a really good time frame. Like, we built that landfill bowl. Did you ever oh see? yeah, right. That with P Stone and yeah, and there was that barbecue and shit. Yeah, man, like that was sick. Actually, I went, I skated there. That was so rad. Like P Stone was carrying an eighty-pound bag of concrete on each shoulder. We got this, no problem. And we, we, I got to know him a little bit in a time period, and he actually gave me the kind of courage or the talk to like. 
you, like I wanted to work for Grind Line, and we went on this little road trip after we did the bowl up the Northwest with like P Kid and Peabody and like um, Frank and P Kid's the homie. He checks in still yeah. with me. I love that dude. And like I don't know, it was probably at a campfire. It's like you know, if you wanna if you wanna do it, Shag will probably take you on. He's got it. You know, I was kind of nervous. Like I wanted, you know, like just go volunteer. You know, just go up there because we. They were doing a park in Vancouver. And so when we got up to, to like Portland, like dog boy was working there. He was on that job. And like, he took me, like, I want to go dog. Can I go with you? And he like dog boy brought me to the first day where I volunteered and like, whatever, like that was Oh eight. But you know how this ends. I think you've been listening to the episodes. Yeah. You're out there at Eli's. You walk in and you're like, "I want this song right now, motherfuckers!" Too man, like, oh. is it the Ramones? Because I got a little hint. It might be no. the Ramones. No, it's fuck, man. I gotta give a shout out. Um, it's it's for my mom, man. This is our song, and it's Jackson Brown's "Running on Empty." No way. Yeah, and, is mom still alive? No, she's not, but this was our jam. So I I wouldn't even be alive if it wasn't, wasn't for moms. So Yeah. Um, big ups to all our moms. Yeah. Live or dead, big ups to moms. Jackson uh, Brown? Jackson Brown. Jackson Brown. I just watched the Dave Geffen uh, documentary last night, and Jackson Brown inducted him into the Hall of Fame. He indu- inducted who? Geffen. Geffen, you know, Geffen, the record label, it was Geffen. Oh, yeah. Geffen, right? So yeah. that dude fucking, I mean, Guns N' Roses, uh, Appetite for Destruction, maybe the best album of all time was Geffen. Like he he made millions off all kinds of, he's a billionaire. Just bzz. anyway, I was watching the documentary is pretty cool. It's interesting. He, he, I think he was one of the first gay people to come out like in the mainstream and just be like, Dude, I'm gay. I've been dealing with a lot of bullshit for a long time, and people really respected that. And he, but he dated Cher at the same time, like fell in oh, love with man. Cher. Yeah, interesting dude. Anyway, long story longer is uh, Jackson Brown. So there's the three my girlfriend loves, or she's my wife now. Three divisions. I call it three divisions because I I never remember of the Kevin Bacon thing. I'm like, <laughs> what is it called? But yeah, it's three, oh, three degrees of separation. There we go. Three yeah. degrees of separation. Jackson Brown to my documentary last night to interviewing <laughs> you today. <laughs> yes, this has been this has been really fun. And like I was listening, I think you were talking to Pete the Ox. You're like, when I die, I want them to put all my magazines on top of me and i'm going to take them that's what i'm going to that's how i want my boards to go i got like, yeah well it's like, crazy because i got a storage unit and i'm like what the fuck am i paying for this storage <laughs> unit and then i went to a cemetery and it looked like there it was my storage unit it's like those big things that, like what do they call them memoratoriums or whatever it's like you oh, walk in and they're they're, they're those huge crap. things and i was like imagine that and all my shit's in there and then like it's just buried like well i don't know it's too morbid and dark i'm not wanting to die don't no, email no. me i'm not suicidal i promise no 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 we got to live yeah dude i'm going for 100 my wife's like look we got married late in life, so we got to take it a little longer than expected. And I was like, if you're by my side, I'm down. Yes, yes. I just wanted to show this one here, dude. I got a pick. You see that guy? Is it Derby? I can't. That's Bod at the at the landfill bowl. Oh, sick. There it is. Yeah, now I can see it. Oh, wow. Front side tuck knee, right? High the bowl was tall. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, as Albino said, Bod, I know you don't want to hear it, but we need the Bod on the board. Yeah, Bod needs to be on board, dude. We need Bod, man. Drink some water straight and see a chiropractor. Yeah, Bod, come on, dude. Let's get a fucking, let's get a little trip down to the Bay Area. Bod was checking in with me the other night. He's like, how you doing? Because I was at game five of the Giants and yeah. I was just stressed out of my mind. Dodgers beat us. It was bunk. The bod's the best. He always he knows me well and he checks in. He's like, fuck, it's looking good, but I know. And I'm, we're just like, all right. He's up doing a lot of man shit up by uh P Stone's family, you know, taking care of fucking Oscar and Felix and like big ups to the bod. Big love to fucking Ryan McWhorter forever. Jen forever. 
We went to Paris together. My only time yeah. there. Come on. Yeah, Bob, bring me out, dude. I'm ready to go to New York. Let's do it. Oh. Rabbi, I love you, dude. dude taught but, me, Rabbi taught me how to weld. Like, the grind line, I got every fucking ounce of knowledge that I've taken on in life. Like, I couldn't be where I am without being a, in that family, like, straight up, like, and meeting Dog and Julian and then, like, Jim and Mickey and, like, just... I don't know. We can shout out all day, but the, the folks who have had the back and like, it's just skateboarding, man. It's the way it fucking is. And the Bay is so tight. Like couldn't ask to be in a better place. Mm. To do what I, I can do. And like, just don't ever give up if you're out there and you, your spots just, just do it and ask for forgiveness later, dude. And don't ever wait. Just fucking do it. Absolutely. Give a big hug to the Trujillos. I love those guys. And right. dude, thanks for the time. I know you got to get running up there and fucking ah. put in some hours, but uh the feeling. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks for me. And just I know you got to go, but can I just I got kind of like a list, not a list, but I just want to absolutely say thank you to a few really important people. And that would be uh Deluxe. Shout out. That would be the Vans family. Shout out. 510. Shout out. High speed productions. Shout out. Red Bull converse shout out any other fucking buddy that ever stepped on that island and put a donation on our gofundme all the dudes who've come and helped and done concrete Diso, george adrian shout out fuck, I, I mean just everybody i mean you know who you are and believe me dean thank you and uh fuck it man we're gonna build destroy repeat build destroy repeat build destroy repeat all day and I just want to say thank you to 510. Shout out. Big love to 510. Go down there and buy a shirt, take a photo, send it to me, and I'll send you whatever you want that I have. I don't care. You just influenced somebody. And welcome to the neighborhood break free, dude. It's glad to, glad to have a shop back in Oakland, too. Man. Yeah, Julian, Rainey, Hungry, Aiden, right? Yeah, yep. That's it, man. You guys are killing it. Big so. ups. Yeah, dude. I went over there and interviewed Rainey actually in the shop for the China banks because he tail slid that shit. So <sighs> hell yeah. Well, happy early birthday. Uh, when is your birthday? 27th. All right, dude. Five, 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 one. I'm five eleven. So uh <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend's five six. <laughs> Your wife? Hey, my wife. Yeah. It's still weird, dude. I'm just like Congratulations. Woo! I know. I'm so stoked. I don't know, dude. My life has been blessed. I got lucky so many times. And then this last time was like the luckiest I got. So I tell you, man, we wouldn't be able to do half the things we do without our loved ones and our friends for the support and Fucking sweetie has been had my back. We've been together 13 years. Nice. That's uh, inspiration. And, and like she, you know, like every relationship, but she's like most supportive woman ever. Like she would probably be bummed if I didn't keep as busy as I did. You know, like mm. she's been there for the park. She's been there for my fucking blackouts. She's been there for my you know, everything. And I the good, the bad, the ugly, like behind every great man is a greater woman. We're going to make it through this and we're going to continue to laugh and have fun until the day we die. And then it's over. So like, let's just, let's keep it going. Hey, let's get one out for the channel street, dude. They're fucking Ooh, back on the map. Yeah. This is a hat from way back. S P S A San Pedro skate park association. Congratulations, Robbie and Berto. Let's get it. Oh, that's sick. Channel Street is back, baby. You heard it here. Congratulations, you guys. A lot of hard work. Dream Evil Pictures. Fucking whatever the power is. Yeah. Fucking hey. All right, Schmitty. I know. All right. We, yeah, I take care, man. No, for real. Peace. Love you guys. Take care. You too. Later. Later. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes, with extra photos and videos. 
Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. Very special shout out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper.